The scripture says that you're supposed to owe no man anything except to love one another out of Romans chapter 13. So you are supposed to pay your bills. God wants you to pay your bills. But he also said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In the Old Testament, you know, when people were giving tithes and stuff, it was the first fruits, not the last fruits, not the leftover fruits. And so people would have to take the first fruits that they got and give the very best to God. So the, very, so the analogy for us is that when you get your money, if you're a steward and you say, God, this is actually yours, you're the one who blessed me with this, what do you want me to do? The very first thing, according to Scripture, that your master, the one who owns this, the one that you are a steward for, it's his money, the first thing he wants you to do is to give to him. The first thing, not pay your bills, not feed yourself. And if there's something left over, then you're glad to give to God. You're supposed to give to God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And if you don't do that, you don't have the attitude of a steward. You think that this is my money. It's up to me what I do with this. Well, God uh, has given us authority and he will let you live the way you want to, but the right way is to recognize him as the source and to have this attitude of a steward. And so the right thing to do is to say, God, this is yours. What do you want me to do? And I guarantee you, God's word teaches that you seek first the kingdom of God, that you labor and work with your hands so that you can have to give to him that needs. And so if you have the attitude of a steward, there is no question. You just give to him first. You know, even back during Jamie and my poverty days, and we, we were in trouble. I, I remember a time needing $100 to pay our rent. Some of you would love to have that problem, wouldn't you? A $100 rent <laughs> instead of thousands of dollars rent. But we had a $100 rent to pay. And did you know, Jamie and I prayed and we wrote out a covenant and believed that we were getting that money, but we prayed specifically for $120 because I wasn't about to take $100, pray for it, and then just give it to somebody else to pay my bill. I've never had a dollar come through my hand in my life that I have not given off of it, ever. Never, ever. The first thing I've always done, and I hate to use myself as an example because I'm not bragging, I'm just saying that this is the attitude that God has instilled into me. And even when we were desperate, and I was three weeks late, on rent, if somebody would have come and said, you know, here's a hundred dollars for your rent, I'd have given off of that first instead of paying my bill. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying that's the attitude that I had. I would not have a need and just, if somebody met my need and gave me exactly what I needed, I'd have given off of it. I've never had a penny come my way that I hadn't given off of it. This is the attitude of a steward and if it's God's money, he told you to seek first. And he didn't say except if you're in an emergency, unless it's a critical situation. You just get this attitude to where, God, you are the boss and I'm going to do what you said. And you said that take everything that ever comes into my hand and I'm going to give off of it. Quiet in this Presbyterian Amen. church. <laughs> I know that this is not the attitude that most people have. Most people, when you're behind, you are thinking, I've got $1,000 and you're praying for $1,000 to pay your bill. But man, if you are a godly person, you ought to play, pray for at least $1,100 so that you could give a tithe off of that and not just pay your bill. But you constantly need to be thinking about that, man, you need to honor God with your substance. This is what Proverbs chapter three is talking about. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. If you will honor God and by, by uh, extension, you could say that if you aren't giving off of everything you get, you aren't honoring God. It's true. You're leaning under your own understanding. You're putting your wisdom ahead of God's. 
And you're saying, God, I know that you said to give, but man, I need this and I got this bill and they're going to turn off my electricity if I don't pay. And so I've got to do this. And you put your wisdom ahead of God's. I'm telling you, when you get this attitude that God, I don't care what the situation is, I will give off of anything that I get. I'm going to put first the kingdom of God. You'll find out that there will be enough money there to give. But when you get just a barely get by attitude and you're praying for just enough to meet the need and you aren't paying for any extra, that's where your faith, that's what your faith will produce. Amen. 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 You limit your own prosperity when you don't have the attitude of a steward. You need to have this attitude that God, this is your money. What do you want me to do? And you go to the word and the word says you give the first fruits, not the leftover fruits, not the last fruits, not if there's enough left fruits, the first fruits. And you just give and you live to give and you put first the kingdom of God. That's the attitude of a steward. A steward does not own the money. They are managing the affairs of another person. And so you do what that person wants you to do, not what you want to do. You need to quit having the attitude of an owner and you need to have the attitude of a steward. And this car, the house, everything I've got, God, it's yours. You're the one who gave it to me. And if God told you to give it away, you give it away. There's a lot of people that, man, this has never gone through your brain. There is no way that you would even consider giving away a car or giving away a house or anything because it's yours. I work for this. You ought to have the attitude if it's, it's God's. And he gave it to you. And if he told you to give it away, God is not a subtractor. God is a giver. God is the greatest giver who has ever lived. And when, when you start talking the way I'm talking, there's a lot of people that will think, well, if I was to have the attitude you're talking about, I'd never have anything. That's true if there wasn't a God who promised Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. If God didn't promise that, then it's true that to take a portion of what you've got and give it away, you're moving away from abundance. You're moving away from plenty. If there wasn't a God who promised that when you put him first, he's going to bless you. But since we have a God who promised that if you put him first, he's going to give to you, then giving and having this attitude that you never just look at things as your own. God, this is yours and I'm going to follow your instructions when you get that attitude, man, God will bless you. The eyes of the Lord are looking in this place today for somebody who will put him first and trust him and trust his promises. We say we trust God and that we believe God and that we're saved and we trust all of those promises about our eternity, but we don't trust the same Bible that promises us that when you put first the kingdom of God, that you will have all these other things added unto you. We don't trust the same Bible that says give and it'll be given unto you. Man, I just don't really understand how a person can departmentalize their life into saying, I trust John 3, 16, Romans 10, 9, that if I confess with my mouth that I'll be born again, I trust that, but I don't trust the scripture that he'll multiply my finances. That's inconsistent. It's hypocritical. Man, the same God who promised that if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart, we'll be born again. He promised that if you give, it'll be given unto you. Put first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added. We've got to get to where we get this mindset of a steward and quit looking at this as our own. And God, you want to bless me and to prosper me so that I can be a blessing. And so you, you lift your eyes from just looking down here at what you need and you look up at what do other people need? You know, instead of just praying and saying, oh God, help me to get my tuition paid. It ought to be, God, I want to be a channel. Help me to be able to prosper and pay somebody else's tuition. And I can promise you, if God blesses you to pay somebody else's tuition, yours will be paid too. It says over in, 
2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, Now he that gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, both multiply your seeds sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. God gives seed to sowers. This isn't talking about physical seed. It's using that as an example of prosperity, but it talks about that he gives money to people who are givers. If you're short of money, God doesn't see you as a giver. He gives money to people who will give. If he can get it through you, he'll get it to you. If you're short of finances, it's because God doesn't see you as a giver. He sees you as a person who's built the reservoir and you're just looking for yourself. But when God finds somebody who wants to be a giver and wants to bless somebody else, he will give seed to the sower. He will give seed to people who will sow it and give it to other people. And he will multiply your seed sown. And he'll provide bread for the eater, it says in that same verse. God never gives you just enough for you to give, but he will also bless you so that you can eat at the same time. You know, I had a church in Merritt Island, Florida that I went to for probably 10 years in a row. And anyway, this church had three or 400 people in the church. And this is when we were building a building down in Colorado Springs and I needed $3.2 million dollars. And I'd communicated that to our partners. And this pastor of this church, there was about 300 people, maybe between three and 400 people in this church. And he was praying and he felt like God told him that that church was supposed to give me $50,000 that week for a Sunday through Wednesday night meeting. And uh, that's a lot of money for a three or 400 member church. Uh, to give. At that time, it would have been the largest offering I probably ever received. So anyway, that's what the Lord told him. And he got up on Sunday morning and told the people what God had told him. And he said, I'm believing that we're going to give Andrew $50,000 towards uh, for, uh, building this building. And because that was a lot of money, he said, here's what the Lord spoke to me. And he quoted that scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And he said, God said he would give seed to people who will sow it. How many of you, if the Lord gives you money this week, and he says, not just in the past, but this week, if the Lord blesses you and gives you extra money this week, how many of you will sow a thousand dollars towards this? And he asked for 50 people to pledge a thousand dollars if the Lord gave it to him that week. So this was on Sunday morning and I forget exactly, but there was like 10 people or a dozen people that stood up and said that they would uh, pledge $1,000 if the Lord uh, blessed them with extra this week. And so that was on Sunday morning. By Sunday night, there was already seven or eight people that Sunday afternoon had more than $1,000 come in unexpectedly. This wasn't a weekday even. It wasn't at work. It was just they had a thousand dollars plus and there wasn't a single one that only got a thousand dollars. Everyone had more than that. So by Sunday night, they started giving testimonies and a lot more people said, oh yeah, I'll give a thousand dollars if you'll <laughs> give me more. And then on uh, Monday night, there was a man who came and he and his wife, they believed that God was going to bless them. And so he already had a thousand dollars in his saving and they wrote out a thousand dollar check and uh, they were going to give it in the offering on Monday night. And um, they prayed over it. And then he went to work. And when he got to work, it turned out that his boss called him in and he says, we're eliminating your whole department. We're laying everybody off. But he says, we like you so much that we didn't want to lay you off. So what we did was just put you over this other department and they increased his salary $4,000 a month and gave him a two week paid vacation. So he got up and gave that testimony on Monday night and all of a sudden everybody was, oh, I'll give a thousand dollars. And did you know, they wound up giving us, I think it was $55,000 and every single person had God give them money and not just the thousand dollars to give, but also gave them some to eat for themselves, not just seed to plant. And that just illustrates the way that the kingdom works. If you really understood what I was talking about, instead of thinking, oh man, I got to start giving off of everything that happens. And I've, I've got to put 
you know, first fruits. And instead of looking at it in a negative way, if you understood how the kingdom worked, when God sees a person with this attitude, it starts a supernatural flow of prosperity towards you. Not so that you can just use it for yourself. It's a hard attitude. There's nothing wrong with you having a nice house. There's nothing wrong with you having a fancy car. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. What's wrong is when the love of those things is what's driving you. You can get to where you love God and you love people and you love being a blessing more than you love yourself. And when you get that attitude, you just can't out give God. You start giving and being a blessing and I guarantee you the blessings of God are going to come upon you and overtake you. They will chase you down. You know, I'm, I, I'm hesitate to use myself, but I, I know what happened to me better than I know what happened to anybody else. And I'm just telling you that because I've put God first in this area, God's blessings have come upon me. I've given, we've given away probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 cars. Some of them brand new. We go down and buy a brand new car and they finance it and I pay their payments. I just got through doing that just a few months ago with a guy for six years. I made his car payments and bought him a really nice car. And so I, I give cars away. I buy cars for other people and I didn't do it to get something. But did you know what? The pickup that I drive, it was given to me. It's a platinum F-150. And I, the guy that gave it to me three and a half years ago just ordered me a brand new platinum. <laughs> I'm not giving to get, but I'm saying that you can't outgive God. Amen. And God will take care of you. Amen. If you understood what I was saying, this isn't about taking from you, it's about blessing you. But if you give and if you receive this and say, man, well, I'm going to start giving so that I can get, you got the love of money. You need to give knowing that if you give, you'll get. And the thing that excites you is that that'll just empower you to give more. Amen. So if your attitude is I give to receive so I can give more, that's good. But if the reason you're giving is so that you can get, you still got a rotten attitude. You're still just thinking about yourself. You need to get to where you put first the kingdom of God. You love other people more than you love yourself. Like Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I can testify to that. Man, I have, I love giving. I love blessing other people. I would rather give than receive. But I've learned how to receive because I couldn't give if I don't receive. So receiving is a part of it. I'm not against it. My mother you know, she was raised with this mindset that you don't give, you don't want anything back and stuff. So anytime she would give money to the ministry or something like that, I'd say, I believe God's blessing you back a hundredfold. And she says, oh, I didn't give to get. I don't want anything back and stuff. And it was, it was partially good that she wasn't greedy, but also that limits your ability to give. So you need to learn how to receive. You need to believe that when you give, it's going to be given back unto you. But you don't give with a selfish motivation. Amen. It's not like you're buying the blessing of God. You can't buy God's blessing. It really just comes down to faith. Faith is what appropriates everything that God has provided for us. And prosperity is one of those things that he's provided. And faith appropriates it. And it's one thing to say, well, I believe in God, trust in God for my finances. Talk is cheap. You know what really releases the power is when you not only say it, but you do it. Amen. And when you give, it's not about you aren't buying the blessing of God. You aren't somehow or another putting God in a position that he's got to give. It, giving is about your faith. You say you're trusting God, prove it. If you really trust in God, he says, when you give, it'll come back to you 100 fold in this life. Mark chapter 10, verse 30 and 31. 100 times in this life. If you believe it, then act on it. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. So if you understood the things I'm talking about today, this will show you the true attitude of prosperity. It's not about you getting more, although that can come. And God will bless you. You can't outrun the blessings of God. But the real purpose of prosperity 
is you just are a steward. God, this is yours. You gave it to me. You gave me the strength, the health to be able to do it. What do you want me to do with it? He wants you to seek first the kingdom of God. He wants you to work so that you can have to give to him that needs. He wants you to be a blessing. He blesses you to be a blessing. And if you understand that and start cooperating with that, you start a supernatural flow of divine finances towards you. And if you do it over a prolonged period of time, this is another thing I've learned is that God doesn't just give it to you all at one time. He gives it to you as you are able to trust it. It goes on to say in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that people who seek after riches pierce themselves through with many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in perdition. If your goal is to get wealthy, you are opening yourself up to demonic attacks. But if your goal is to be a blessing, which means you have to be wealthy to be able to bless other people, well, then you, you avoid all of those things. So it really is a hard attitude. You need to have the proper attitude. You need to become a steward. And if you do that with the right heart, man, God will get it through you. If he can get it through you, he will get it to you. Amen. Amen. 